All right, let's take, what we're going to do um, in this last video here is we're going to take a look at what effect a down payment would have on a particular purchase. Uh, let's suppose that we're looking at a house that's fairly common sort of thing. Let's suppose that we found this house and it cost $240,000 seemed like something that I should be able to afford. It's a pretty house. It's about the right size that I need for my family. Um, and I think this is the sort of thing that I'd like to do. What I'd like to do is I would, uh, I want to figure out what my monthly payment is going to be. Um, credit's decent, but not great. I managed to find something for a 6% loan um, for a 30-year mortgage. And I would like to figure out my monthly payments. Now, um, the problem is, is that most banks don't want to give you the entire amount of the value of the house. And the reason is that they, that, um, the bank wants you to be a little bit invested, um, in your house, uh, especially at the very beginning when you're paying lots of money in interest and not very much money on the, towards the principal of the loan. Um, one of the things that most house, um, mortgages require to have a traditional loan with lower interest rates, um, those a lot of places require a 20% down payment on a house. And they w won't even really consider you if you can't put that down. So my question is, if you would like to buy this house f for $240,000, um, first of all, what would that 20% down payment look like? And then what would my monthly payments be after making that down payment? Um, so let's go through and do it. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is if you're making a 20% down payment, we need to figure out what 20% of 240000 is. Uh, basically, this is just a regular old percentage problem. Change the percent to a decimal. It's 0.20 of means times 240000 You, of course, can use your calculator to get that value and it helps to turn it on. Um, point 20 times to buy 240,000. Don't mess up your zeros here. One, two, three, four. I think that should work. Um, enter, and what that means is um, I need to come up with $48,000 as a down payment. Uh, that's usually the trick and why uh, a lot of times you have to save for a long time before you can get that first house um, or you need to come up with some other types of financing before you can afford a nice, um, a nice tr nicer traditional mortgage. Um, in this case, if my down, this is the amount of my down payment. So when I want to go and figure out what my monthly payment's going to be for the house for those 30 years, what I have to do is I have to figure out how much I'm actually taking the loan out for. So even though the value of the house was 240000 I'm going to pay off 48000 up front to show the bank that I am committed to this home and that I really want to keep it and take care of it. So um, the down payment takes off that $48,000 from the $240,000 asking price. And what that means is that when I actually am asking the bank to borrow money, I'm not borrowing $240,000, I'm borrowing $192,000 loan. So this is going to be my starting amount, or my P0, P0, if you like calling it that, in the, um, in the loan formula. Again, remember the loan formula and the payment annuity formula is the same thing. My formula is P naught equals D times 1 minus 1 plus R divided by K to the negative NK power. Uh, close the parentheses divided by R divided by K. Um, so in this case, again, the, the P naught is this value where I take my the amount of the of the purchase minus the down payment, and this is the new amount that I'm actually needing the financing loan for. Um, then in this case, R is going to be six percent is the interest rate I qualified for. Um, N uh, should have been a capital N. That's okay. I figure that out there. Uh, N this is a 30-year loan, so that's going to be 30. K is monthly because we're doing monthly payments for our value. Um, D is what we're trying to find, and that is what is the amount of that monthly payment. 
So here we're going to do 192,000 equals D times 1 minus 1 plus R was 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the, and again put this in parentheses, negative 30 times 12. 30 years is the N, 12 times for monthly. And then make sure you close the big set, close your parentheses for your exponent, but also close the parentheses for the top of this big fraction and divided by 0 0.06 divided by 12. Um, just like before, all of this stuff has no variables involved in it. So figure out all of these things that are in um, the box, and then I can solve my equation for D. So as I go here, start with open parentheses, 1 minus parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. Oops, helps if I type that right. 0 0.06 divided by 12. Um, close the parentheses, use the caret for the exponent, um, then make a set of parentheses for the power. Make sure you use negative 30 times 12. Close the parentheses for the exponent bring it down to the main level if necessary, and then close the parentheses for the top. Then we want to divide it by the bottom, which is 0 0.06 divided by 12 in parentheses, and see what we get. So here, this right side here is this 166 number. So I have 192,000 is equal to D times 166.79. 1, 6, blah, blah, divide by that 166 number on both sides, 166.7916. Uh, that gets the D by itself, and on the other side of the equation, when I do 192,000, oops, one too many zeros there, and uh, divided by that last answer on my calculator screen, and I get a monthly payment of $1,151.14. So that would be my monthly payment for a $240,000 house that I made a 20% down payment for up front. So it was, the house was $240,000. I figured out 20% down payment, subtracted that from the value. My actual loan amount is 192000 and this is the amount of my monthly payment. And so that is the way that that all works out. Um, so uh, questions that the, that the book is going to ask you for some of these. Um, one question is how much is the loan amount going to be? That's what you get after you subtract the down payment. So we're financing that 192000 What are the monthly payments going to be? That's what you get when you solve and find that value for D. Um, another question that it might ask you is how much interest are you going to pay over the life of the loan? And this is a really interesting one. If this is my monthly payment here, $1,151.14, if this is my monthly payment, keep in mind that I'm going to pay this payment every month for 30 years. So if I want to figure out um, how much money I actually pay for this house, 1151.14, times 12 times 30. What I'm actually paying for this house at the end of 30 years using 6% interest, what I actually paid for this house was 414000 410 dollars and 40 cents. Now, keep in mind that the value of the house when I bought it was only 240000 And I paid $48,000 up front. So my loan was for 192000 but over the 30-year mortgage, I ended up paying a total of $414,410. So how much interest did I pay? Well, my total interest, sorry, I'm kind of running out of board space here. But my total interest is what I paid on the loan, which was that 414, 410, 40. 
and then I subtract not the house payment value, but the loan payment value, because that's how much I actually borrowed. Keep in mind this other $48,000 I already paid cash for, so that wasn't an in interest. Um, so I want to subtract the $192,000, which was what, being, what was being financed. Um, so take that 414.10, or 414.10, thousand four hundred and ten dollars subtract the hundred and ninety two thousand dollars that was that made up the cost of the loan and I get this astounding amount which is two hundred and twenty two thousand well, dollars two hundred twenty two thousand four hundred and ten dollars and forty cents that's being paid just in interest now mind you it's you know added up over 30 years, but I mean, for crying out loud, that's more than twice the value of the house that I took out. So um, home loans, this idea of interest, even 6% doesn't sound like very high, but over 30 years adds up incredibly, incredibly a lot. So anyway, points to live by, and go ahead and try those last few problems on your homework from this section. Um, and I think we just have one more set of videos for this unit. And in this one, in this last one, what we're going to do is see what happens, um, especially when we're looking at retirement accounts, where we're combining different types of um, processes to answer some slightly more complex questions. So come back for a retirement lesson in the next video after you've gotten your homework done. As always, ask questions on the boards if you need them.